Hey guys, welcome to another video lecture. Today we're going to do sequences in series, specifically arithmetic series. So let's get started. First, let's go over the, some definitional terms. We have a series and we have a sequence. So a series is the sum of terms in a sequence. For example, a sequence can be anything like a list of numbers, from, which is an ordered list, so it has to have some sense of order to it. For example, I have 1, 2, 3, 4. If I want to find the series, this would be the sum of these terms. So clearly the sum of these terms, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10. All right. What we're going to go into today is summations. So we are going to go through summations or sigma notation. Sigma notation is shorthand for the notation used to write and find the sum of. Most often it's used with an explicit formula. So this is sigma notation. Notice we went over this on Friday in class, so just a quick refresher. This is the Greek letter sigma, which indicates summation, meaning we're going to add up all of our terms. Now, the number at the bottom right here, that is where we start, and this is where we end. Remember when we did partial sums, we would go from, say, 1 to 3. If I wanted the third partial sum, I'd go from 1 to 3. The nice thing about sigma notation is that I'm able to specify where I'm starting my series from and where I'm ending it. This right here will be our equation. We worked a lot with the equations in class. We won't use it recursive equations, we'll use explicit equations. So first, really quick, finite series versus infinite series. I know we went over this, but a finite series has a fixed number of terms, whereas an infinite series is a series who continues indefinitely. And Infinite series come from infinite sequences, just as finite series come from finite sequences. All right, let's look at example seven on our notes. So on our notes, we have let sequence A equals 8, 10, 13, 14, 17, 20. We want to find out what is the constant that keeps on that we keep on adding here. So the constant we keep on adding, the difference the, would be 2. So notice, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. All right, great. So I found my difference, my D. Now, I'm going to look for my A3. So remember, A sub 3 means my third term. Well, I just look for my third term here. And my third term actually here, and it should be on your notes as well, is 12. So, that's 12. B. B asks for a sub 5. a sub 5, that's pretty easy. What's my fifth term? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My fifth term is 17. Alright, those are two really easy ones. That's what we went over in class. We were looking at different term numbers. Let's look at this next one. All right, so we're introduced to sigma notation. So remember, whenever we see the sigma, this means that we're going to have a summation. We're going to add the terms together. Where are we going to start and where are we going to end? The bottom tells us where to start, and the top tells us where to end. So we're going to start with our first term. So this right here is our first term. And we're going to end with this last term. So my first term, and by the way, this is the equation I'm using. This just happens to say, uh, I'm using whatever terms are in my list. So my first term, I'm going to start with my first one. So it's going to be a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3, and then I stop because this tells me I'm only going up to my third term. All right, so a sub 1, so my first term is 8, and I'm getting that from right there, plus 10, again, getting it from right there, and this should be 12, guys and that's 12. So I'm just looking for the summation. I'm looking to add them all up. So 8 plus 12 is 20 plus 10. You should get 30. All right. So let's move on. 
let sequence a equal 8, 10, 12, 14, 17, 20. Find summation of, notice, right down here, I have where I'm starting. So I'm no longer starting at 1, am I? I'm starting for my second term. So this is very important. I'm not going to be adding my first term. I'm not going to be starting with my first term. I'm going to be starting with my second term. And I'm going to be going up to my sixth term. So let's go ahead and do this. So a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4 plus a sub 5 plus a sub 6. And then I stop because those are the only terms I want to count. All right, well, my second term is 10. My third term should be 12. My fourth term is 14. My fifth term is 17. And my sixth term is 20. And I'm going to find the sum of all of these. So I'm just going to grab my calculator right now. And I'm going to see, let's see, 10 plus 12 plus 14 plus 17 plus 20 and I get 73. Alright, so similar notation is pretty easy, you just gotta memorize what goes on the bottom and what goes on the top. Alright, so let's try one with a bit more difficulty. Let's look at example 8. So example 8 wants us to write an expression for the sum of the infinite series using summation notation. So this time they want us to put something in summation notation. Alright, well first let's look at this. Let's look at A negative 7, negative 1, 5, 11, and it goes on and on and on. Alright, so first of all, these these two, these three dots should let you know that this is an infinite series. So this is an infinite series. We're going to keep in mind of that. And let's see what else. Negative 7 to negative 1 to 5 to 11. So do I have a common difference here? I have a common difference of 6 each time I'm adding 6. So if I'm adding 6 to each time, I know that I'm going to have a d of 6. And then what's my first term? Well, my first term is going to be that negative 7. All right, well I can start I can start to write my sigma notation. And your sigmas don't need to be that pretty, guys. Don't worry too much about that. And where are we starting? Well, we're going to start from the beginning. So I, and it doesn't need to be I, guys. You can make N, X, W, whatever you want. Just be consistent. We're going to start from my first term. And it's asking me for the sum of the infinite series. So if it's an infinite series, think about this. Does it stop? No, it goes on for infinity. So at the top, you're going to place an infinity. All right. Now, what's going to go here? Well, I need an equation to go there. I can figure out an equation for this, can't I? That's what we did today. That's all we did today. All right, well, I found my d. I know my a. I know my first term, and I know my difference. So a of n equals my first term, a of 1. And I'm using this equation right here, guys. This is the equation we use today in order to find out explicit formulas for the addition. All right, so a, a sub 1 is negative 7 plus my difference, which is d, times n minus 1. All right, go ahead and just plug that in here. And you're done. That is this infinite series written using summation notation. You don't have to actually add it because they're not asking us to find the sum. They're simply asking us to write it in summation notation. If you're a little confused, rewind a bit. Notice what I did. Over here, I put in my explicit formula. See over here, this is where we put in our explicit formula. We can find our explicit formula by looking at our series and finding the difference. So these are two of the skills that we learned, and we're combining them today. All right, let's try this one. Let's see what's happening here. Well, I have 5, negative 15, 
45 and negative 135. So in each of these cases, I am multiplying. I am multiplying by negative 3 here, negative 3 here, and negative 3 here. So my r is going to be negative 3. And then my a1, well, what's my first term? 5. Okay? So now I want you to write this in summation notation, and I'll get us started. I'll get you started by just writing down this. You're going to have to get a formula in here. And remember, we're not using the additional one anymore. We're using the geometric. So make sure to use your geometric formula, and that should be in your notes that we did today. What's your geometric explicit formula? And if you know your R and you know your first term, you should be able to find that. So plug that in there. It's an infinite series. So if it's an infinite series, this right here is going to be infinity. And you're going to start, make this consistent, with n equals 1. So go ahead and try that one out. Remember, this is a geometric explicit formula that you're going to use. So it's the one that has the R in it. It's not recursive. Okay. All right, so hopefully you pause the video, you tried that out, and then I'll check it in class to make sure that you guys have been doing the notes. We have an arithmetic series, so the sum of the terms in a finite arithmetic sequence. So if we know the last term, then this is what we're going to use, right here. Now this is useful, say, if I said add all the numbers up from 1 through 100, I said I want you to add all the uh, integers up, all the, all the positive whole numbers from 1 to 100 up, so that would be like 1 plus 2 plus 3, and you did that all the way up to 100. Well, there's actually a really quick shortcut way to do that, and that is the sum of my numbers, of my terms, is going to equal n divided by 2, so remember n is terms, a1, which is our first, and a to the and a n, which is our last. So notice that what we're going to need is we're going to need our n, which is number of terms. You need to know a1, which is first term. And you're also going to need to know a n, which is your nth, or in this case, your last term. All right, go pause the video if you need to copy this down. Find the sum of the first 32 terms in the arithmetic sequence series: negative 12, ne negative 12, negative 6, 0. Let's notice the pattern. Well, it's telling me it's an arithmetic series, so the first thing you should do, guys, when you look at this problem is, what's my first term, what's A1, and what's my difference? Remember, from the last slide, everything we needed, the main things we needed were this. I need to know the number of terms, I need to know the last term, and I need to know the first term. So, let's write down what I need. I know that A1... I know that a1 equals negative 12, because that's my first tw term. I don't know what my last term is yet, and it wants me to find 32 terms. All right, and I also know that the difference of this set, the difference of this set equals, well, every time I'm subtracting 6. All right, now you may you may look at this and you're going to be like, hey, Mr. Vedi, if I don't know my A of N, how can I even start to figure that out? But we know an equation from today that we used. We used this explicit formula, right? And we have our first term. We have our nth term. We have the number of terms. And we have the difference, which is all we need here. So we could solve for N. Simple algebra. So let's go ahead and get our algebra caps on. A of N is what I'm solving for it. 
a of n equals a1, negative 12, plus d, negative 6, times n minus 1, 32 minus 1. All right, where 32 minus 1 is 31 minus 6. We got that negative 12 out here, and that's going to give us a of n. So notice I'm solving for a of n. I'm going to quickly do this in my calculator. So I have negative 12 and then minus 6 times 31. And that gives me a of n equals negative 198. So I'm going to go ahead and write in here a of n equals negative 198. Now I can plug in everything that I have into my equation. So s of n right here equals n over 2, so the number of terms over 2. So that's 32 divided by 2 times a of 1, which is negative 12, plus a of n, which is negative 198. That's what we just found. And this will give us the sum of all those first 32 terms. So we do 32 divided by 2 times, and I'm going to open up my parentheses and do negative 12 plus negative 198. And I get s of n equals negative 3360. Alright, hopefully that clarified a few things. Go back and look at the other example and make sure you solve that for tomorrow's class. Alright, have a great day guys, and we'll do the rest tomorrow.